हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप द फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज रिटर्न ओवर एंड पावर इट इज डेल्ट इन प्रीवियस टू वीडियोस इट इज क्लियर टू इट ओके सो इन दिस वीडियो आई वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेकंड चैप्टर दैट इज बर्मन यादशा व्हिच वाज द फर्स्ट मुस्लिम डायनेस्टी एस्टैब्लिश्ड ओके सो इन दिस chapter is divided into two parts first being burman sultans and the second is shah's uh, dynasty okay so coming to the first part of this chapter that is about burman sultans okay burman empire was was founded in 1347 and it has its path in karnataka maharashtra and telangana okay so when it was established its capital was kalburgi but later the capital shifted to bidar burmani empire was founded in the northern part of krishna river whereas the vijayanagara empire which we spoke in previous uh, lessons was found in the southern part of uh, krishna river so prominent burman sultans who founded established uh, it were alauddin Hasan Gangu Burman Shah. He was the founder of this dynasty. He was working in the army of Delhi Sultan of uh, Muhammad bin Tughluq. Tajuddin Firoz Shah or Firoz Shah was one of the great sultans uh, in the Burman dynasty. Then there was. Ahmad Shah, Muhammad Shah, too, being the prominent personalities. So the first prominent uh, personality that uh, I would be focusing on right now would be Tajuddin Firoz Shah, who ruled from 1397 to 1422. He was one of the greatest uh, sultans of the dynasty. He was a liberal. judicious and a believer in god he was a writer himself and he would edit the copies of quran in his own life okay he encouraged all languages during his time he was an expert in geometry and theology he gave shelter to many philosophers poets and artist and he established an observatory in dolatabad in maharashtra he built a new city named firozabad which was built on the bank of bhima river great sufi saint that is bandina was was uh, present during his time and he gifted many villages to him he would mainly concentrate on developing the ports in his time which would thereby encourage the foreign tourism uh, uh, for his dynasty okay so the other prominent okay so this is the picture of dolata park that is an observatory built by firosha and this is firosha park the city which he built okay uh, so the other prominent personality uh, of the bamani dynasty is mohammad kavim he is basically a persian and he worked as a prime minister during mohammad shah's time 
he contributed a lot uh, for the development of uh, this dynasty by uh, capturing Hubli, Belgavi, and Goa from Vijayanagara Empire. And his administration was basically um, based on Islamic laws. He encouraged revenue and postal services. He had fixed taxes based on the land, fertility, and education fertility. He was a philosopher himself, and hence he founded Madrasa, that is university in Bita. Uh, so this Madrasa encouraged Islamic religion and law education, um, astronomy, mathematics, religion. History was being taught here. Okay, free education and hostel facilities were given and it is also told that during their time around 3000 manuscripts was present in the library of madrasa okay so because of his contributions there were many lead, uh, regional re leaders who were um, not liking him and they wanted to destroy him uh, so they got jealous of his fame and they conspired to murder him. So after his death, the, the dynasty also uh, started to go towards the declining stage of the dynasty. Okay. So the contributions of the Bahmani dynasty can be divided into three subtopics or three fields to what they have contributed. First being education, then it's literature field, and the last one is the sculpture field. So coming to education, education, uh, Bahmani sultans encouraged Islamic education, and uh, chanting of Quran was a part of their education system. Kalburgi, Peter, Ishlapur, and Dawatabad were few Islamic education centers during that time. Poor people and orphans were provided with free food and shelter and there were many scholarships given to the students of Madra uh, students in Madrasa. In Madrasa and in schools, Quran, philosophy and Sufism principles were taught to the students. Okay. So coming to the literature field, uh, literary activities were very uh, uh, greatly encouraged by Bahmani sultans. They gave shelter to many philosophers, poets, and writers. Firoz Shah, Muhammad Shah II, Muhammad Kavan were themselves great writers and minister poets. During their time, Persian, Arabic, and Urdu uh, literature got uh, developed. Great Sufi saint and writer Bandhe Nawaz belonged to their period. The language that they used then was called as Takni language, which they later developed as Urdu language. This is a picture of Firosha. And this is a picture of uh, Muhammad Shatu who contributed immensely for the literature field in their dynasty. So coming to the last field, and one of the uh, important reasons why Bahmani dynasty is still famous is the cult culture and uh, architecture field. So, they built many monuments and uh, in uh, Bidar and Kalpurki and many other places, which are basically in uh, Hindu Islam style, or it can also be uh, called as Dakini style. 
I think so one of the first contributions of Burmanese were Jamai Musk of uh, Kalburgi, which was built by Mohammad Shah. It has uh, meeting halls with small rooms, which is also a major attraction for the monument. Now, the various other sculptures built uh, were Tomb of Bandanawad, which is a prominent monument of Kalburki. Then, Peter's Sola Kam Mosque. These uh, were decorated and they have been carved with wooden crafts on them. Another uh, prominent uh, sculpture built was the 12 tombs of Ashtur, which is present near Vidar, which is also famous. Then uh, Madrasa was also built uh, during that time. This madrasa uh, was built by Mohammed Kavan, which is 242 feet wide, 222 feet long, 56 feet height. It has three storied buildings. And uh, this plays an important role in the education centers uh, during that time. Okay. So this, here we come at the, la uh, at the last part of the first topic of this chapter. So if you have any questions regarding who founded this dynasty, who were the prominent rulers, what were their contribution, and what was the contribution of this dynasty in the field of education, literature, sculpture and uh, architecture you should go back to few uh, parts of this video to understand it okay so if you have totally understood the first part of it we will go on to the second part of this chapter that is Shah dynasty so after Muhammad Kavan uh, died Burmani kingdom could not continue very strongly. The rulers who came after Muhammad Kavan, uh, that is Muhammad III, then um, Muhammad, were very uh, incompetent to rule. And hence, uh, after that, uh, the last king was uh, Sultan Kalimul uh, Shah. Okay. And once he died, the kingdom was totally declined and broken. Okay, so the Bahmani kingdom had broken, got broken down into five states of shahs. Okay, uh, so these are Adil shahs of Vijaypur, then Bharat shahs of Vidar, Kutub shahs of Kolkanda, Nizam shahs of Ahmednagar, and uh, Imad Shahs of Berar. Okay. So we would be learning about each Shahs one by one and how they contributed and who were the leaders uh, during their time who uh, helped in flourishing that period of their time. Okay. So coming to the first one that is Adil Shahs of Vijaypura. These they ruled from 1490. 1489 to 1686, nearly around the 200 years. So, Yusuf Adil Shah was the founder of Adil Shah dynasty of Vijaypura. He was a great administrator and uh, he was tolerant to other religions, meaning that he would respect the other religion. And, uh, and, to uh, and give them the liberty to follow their religion. Okay. So after them came uh, Ibrahim Adil Shah II, the prominent uh, leader. Okay. 
so he ruled from uh, 1580 to 1626 he was one of the greatest king among all the sultans of uh, their time he expanded the kingdom and he made uh, the kingdom very rich during his time he was given a title called jagat guru badsha and he was also tolerant to other religions he gave shelter to many hindu philosophers poets and musicians in his court he uh, worked for the cultural harmony of hindu muslims he was a writer himself and he wrote a book named kitab e navras so this uh, book may uh, begin with uh, worshiping the gods like ganpati saraswati bhairava and others okay and uh, he wanted to popularize music among muslims he built uh, a very prominent a sculpture named ibrahim roza okay so coming to the contributions of adil shah so they ruled for around 200 years okay so and hence they contributed a lot in the field of education literature music fine arts and arts and culture so coming to the first field that is education adil shahs were great lovers of education their education policy was to develop islamic culture the education centers uh, during their time was called as muktab that is a mosque and madrasa that is a college or university uh, there they would teach about knowledge religion law poetry the education educational institutes were uh, run under the king's patronage okay so the next field of contribution is literature contribution to by adil shah is very prominent in this field um, the, the kings were poets themselves and they wrote many books in uh, persian arabic urdu and kannada and hence the literature field became very rich during their time one of the famous persian poet was farishta who wrote Tariq uh, Tariq Sarishta and the other poet uh, is Kulshani Ibrahim. The Urdu poet uh, who contributed to the literature field is Abdul Ibrahim Nama. Kannada poet being Narahari of Sarave who also uh, who wrote Sarave Ramayana during that time. And another lit uh, literature work that was very famous during the time of Adil Shah is Mullah Nasrin's Ali Nama. Okay, so the next field of uh, contribution is the field of music. Yusuf Ali Adil Shah and Ibrahim Adil Shah were great poets themselves, great musicians. So Ibrahim Adil Shah's kitab e Navra's book uh, was a great work in music. He also opened a music school uh, to encourage the women of royal and rich families uh, who were interested in music. Okay. The next field is fine arts field. Ibrahim uh, Adil Shah too was a fine artist himself. His court had many Persian artists and uh, 
there were many paintings of flowers plants creepers and nature scenes painted on the walls of mosque and closed during the time of amir shah so these paintings help to know the aspirations and interests and traditions of the people of during their time okay so the last uh, field and one of the most important field of contributions by adil shah is the art and culture field so they built many forts palaces mosques and tombs during their time their monuments were basically in indo islamic style so coming to the first one that is a fort so bijapura fort was one of the famous and one of the prominent uh, contribution by them uh, this fort is a big fort which has around 96 bastions or 96 domes on which the fort was built and it has some uh, six main entrances the palaces that they built during their time were gagan mahal which was built by ibrahim adil shah in 1620 it has three stored building uh, towers then asar mahal is one of the famous mahals where the rooms uh, has different paintings painted on it last but not the least palaces that they built was mahatar palace which was built by uh, ibrahim adil shah to it is also a three storied palace it is famous for its fine and delicate decorations built in the mahal or palace they also built many mosque to the uh, the first one being jama masjid which was built by uh, ali adil shah it is famous for the wide prayer hall and this uh, building doesn't have many decorations in it in the second mosque um, that was built by adil shah is ibrahim roza this is built by ibrahim adil shah too in the memory of his wife taj begum in vijaypura this is called as taj mahal of south india it has many tombs of ibra uh, many tombs of ibrahim and his relatives and it is the only roza in india okay gol gumbas is one of the uh, greatest contribution of adil shah and it was built by mohammed who wanted to build something bigger and mightier than uh, ibrahim roza this was built in uh, 1656 and it has a, a big tomb with a whispering chamber inside it is the fourth largest dome built in the world and the first largest dome in india the other contributions by uh, other monuments that are built by adil shahs are bara kaman bade kaman ubli buruj taj pavri anand mahal and chand bavri okay so after adil shahs the next uh, shah is the bharat shahs of bidar who ruled from 1489 to 1690 so bharat shah ruled the deccan uh, bidar and the other regions around it qasim bharat was the founder of this uh, dynasty after him ibrahim and his brother uh, brother qasim ruled bidar they had their inner conflicts which made this 
dynasty to decline okay so after its decline it got merged with uh, vijayapura so the next shah is the kutub shahs of golconda who ruled from 1512 to 1687 so in so we'll have to study about two prominent personalities of kutub shahs so the first being khuli kutub shah so he was a founder of the independent golconda state and he ruled the state with very good administration but he got killed by his own son in 1543 E. Abraham is also one of the prominent personalities of uh, Kutub Shahs of Golconda. So he had a he had compassion for Hindu religions, and there were many Hindu officers in his administration. He made Golconda into a beautiful city during his time. he changed the capital uh, from golconda to hyderabad during his time after him abdul qutub shah abdul hasan and others came into power but they were uh, incompetent kings and hence the golconda got surrendered to mughals okay so the next uh shah that we would be talking about is nizam shah of ahmednagar which was there from 1490 to 1636 in 1490 malik ahmed uh, who was the chief of jinnar province founded his own state and established nizam shah dynasty he captured dolatabad and he expanded the empire after him barham hussein nizam shah and murtaza ruled but they were very incompetent rulers the death of uh, chand bibi led to the declinement of ahmednagar and uh, later in 1637 during the rule uh, during the ruling period of shah jahan ahmednagar got merged with mughal empire and led to the declinement of nizam shahs of ahmednagar dynasty and the last shah that we would be learning in this chapter is imad shahs of birar who ruled from 1490 to 1530 1580 this was situated between pen ganga and vain ganga rivers at tapti which is uh, in the north of bidar it was founded by hatulla in the year 1490 ichlipur was the capital of this uh, dynasty hatulla was given a title name imad ul mulk after his death in uh, 1504 his son alauddin imad shah came into power he was an incompetent king himself and after he died his son daryad 
Darya Imad Shah came into power and even during his rule, Berar, uh, Berar dynasty would battle with the neighboring states. So after the death of uh, Darya Imad Shah, his son, Burhan Imad Shah came into power and during his rule, um, power came to the hands of another person named uh, Tufail Khan, which thereby led to the decline of dynasty and hence the bearer fell into the hands of Vijayapura Sultan. Here now you can see the important years that you have to remember in this chapter. Like, okay, the first being uh, reign of Burmani Kingdom, which which lasted from 1347 to 1527. Then, when was Madrasa established in Bikar? It was established in 1461. Then the time of Adil Shah uh, being 1489 to 1672. Ibrahim Rosa, when was it constructed? It was constructed in 1626. And Golgumbus was construct constructed in 1656. These uh, are the important dates that you have to remember in this chapter. With this, I conclude uh, this chapter. If you have any doubts, you can uh, contact me. And I would be meeting you in the next chapter. Thank you.